So as you can see, the hallway this afternoon is a hive of activity. I'm on painting the white on the panels. I've given Bethany the job of putting the cream on the trims on one of the doors. She's under strict instructions, aren't you, Bethany? Don't splatter anything. Well, you've gone from putting me right in the corner to now putting me at the front door. Your main it's a bit of a change. The star of attraction. Nobody <laughs> puts baby in the corner. Oh, what are you doing in the corner what then? <laughs> I'm trying to cover up your silly message. <laughs> I'm going to go slow. Ooh. Not having much fun today, are you? Uh, using up old pieces and making it work isn't being fun, but we're getting there. Unfortunately, it's just taken a while. Mm, there's only about 20 more slots to go in there. I know, it's, it's so close. It's getting there, and it definitely, the more I see it without the pattern in there, it's working. When I'm sat on the, uh, the throne looking back, it looks good. When the, the door open. Oh yeah, for sure. It doesn't look good for us. <laughs> but yes, we're getting there. Um, but like, unfortunately, I need more wood. I think mm. you say that in every single video. <laughs> Dude, what worries me is I might have to just take a couple more boards up, but um, we're that close. We're that close. Mm, don't like that. Look at the concentration mm. going into this. Well, that's because I'll be shot if I don't. <laughs> Mind my tassel, won't you? Mm -hmm. oh, I love my tassel. <laughs> Oh, you're probably wondering why I have still not painted this bit here. Uh, we can't open the doors today, the weather is grim. But the next bright sunny day that we're here, we can take that lock off and paint underneath. Right, so as I said, I do need some more flooring, unfortunately, to finish off the last bit. So uh, into my store cupboard. The top of the, uh, well, I've been keeping it all, the top of the uh, coach house. Love coming in here. <laughs> As I said before, it's my favourite building of the whole lot. Oh, there's not a lot left. So this is the flooring that came out of what is our temporary kitchen. Isn't it so nice up here? Got to be careful while I walk. And, oh, and there's some pieces over there. So I'm hoping... In fact, definitely, looking at that, I definitely should have enough to finish it. Oh, and some more there. Good. That's the last of that flooring that I have. But it'd be good because I'll have some spare pieces. So I'm going to cut as many or sand as many back as I can. And then uh, I can be a bit pick and choosy. Let's collect a few up and get them back downstairs. Right, so uh, planks, as you see, uh, into my, I can only call it now, my workshop for planing sanding. Uh, I'll run them through the thickness uh, as I have showed before so that they're all 25 millimeter thick because they, they all do vary. So let's get them all the same so when they're sat on top of the OSB they are all nice and flush on the surface. Uh, after I've done that, I then, especially today, I'm going outside as it's uh, a lovely day. Uh, a few I did earlier, I need to sand them down uh, on the face. I removed the original uh, oil, come, you know, the linseed or whatever they put on there. Two reasons. First, obviously, we'll try and get them all back to a reasonably similar tone on the oak. Uh, they aren't all the same. And you'll probably see that when you look at the pattern that I've done in the hallway. Uh, no tree's ever going to be the same all the way through. The second reason, because I put xylophen on there, so we coat both sides two coats of that xylophen, which will kill any insect maggot whatever it is inside them uh, that's been eating them we haven't seen evidence of any of that at all but uh, prevention as well as cure but i need to uh, take off the original coat on top otherwise i'll find my work it'll just sit on top of if you like the varnish it will never soak into the woods so although it's soaking in from the underneath i need to also make sure it does it from both sides so uh, i roughen that side up get the coats down and, uh, and then we'll treat it with the osmo or <laughs> Carol will treat it with the Osmo afterwards. So after a, a few sands, you can see the difference how they're coming up. Obviously, I've kept the one on the right. That uh, hasn't been touched yet, but it was just to give you a, a contrast between the two. But 
Oh, it's gorgeous wood again, isn't it? Definitely wood porn. So back straight into work and an easy afternoon's job is painting this chair with now what I've got the paint, the eggshell for the wood in the anthracite grey, row number two, sorry, 7016. Start by getting the cobwebs off. So I'm using this, this brush, it's a really old brush that's got really fine bristles at the end to get in all the detailing of the flowers and the roses. And I'll probably give this two coats for full coverage. And then I'll be asking for someone's help. I've got a couple of friends in upholstery to help with the, the actual fabric. Right, that's all the wood brought over. That's, there is still a few more spare ones, but uh, uh, that's nearly the end of it. I've just laid it out. Um, I need to do uh, a trim. So uh, all, all different sort of ends. All of those will fit in the gap. Uh, the reason I just laid it out is just to see if there's any obvious ones that uh, don't look good or match up, etc. Um, I have two thicknesses involved here. If I just show you on these two, we have a hundred mil widths so the width across here and then these ones i think are 75 but i think mix and match which is what's been used all the way through should be fine and all i've got to do is fit it in that gap now that gap is about i think it's about 1300 mil and i think there i've got 1500 mil so i don't have a lot to play with beth and i are going to do that today work our way through she's going to choose the good ones for me i'll machine them because they're they're from two different floors so I need to make sure the tongue and groove works uh, as they go down. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to sand these afters, which is not ideal just because of the, the tongue and groove variant. The wood's not completely flat, so there's lips here and there. Uh, I'm not happy with that, so uh, I'll run the belt sander over there. This was a job that Alf decided to tackle on his last day. Not wanting to sit still, he started cutting out all the brambles and the stinging nettles along here. And so this is the wall that goes between the orchard and the top field. It has seen better days and all the top stones have fallen off. Whether that will get finished, I don't know. But my job this afternoon is to hoe around the onions that my mum planted when she was here. Now they have come up, actually come up a lot since we've been away. We know it's really late in the season. If they come to anything, that's brilliant. If they don't, we haven't lost anything because they were just ones that we had lying around anyway. I'm also going to get some runner bean seeds in. Mine unfortunately died, so they're really late. Mother gave me some more when we were back in England. So that's the job that I'm gonna do this afternoon. Quick and simple and easy. that bed done and I've just planted the runner beans. The runner bean seeds look like this. They're English runner beans and with any luck they will come up. They did last year. I've done a little bit more weeding as well but next I'm gonna have to get on top of these tomatoes. They went absolutely crazy last year 
and they're heading the same way again this year uh, last year we had four plants i've only gone for three this year as you can see they're getting quite big all in there not looking too bad since we've been away marigolds are nearing their end but they have been a beautiful burst of colour. So quick update from yesterday, what did you get, what did you do? Yesterday I spent all day on my hands and knees and up the ladder. You always do. Doing the top coat, well first top coat, the satin wood and the, well, the cream and the white. Yes. yes that's work in progress, don't expect too closely. <laughs> like you did with Beth's work. <laughs> what else you been up to? <laughs> I've finished the chair painting, it's had two coats now. We went out yesterday for a trip and I found some trim. I've been looking for some gimp, but it's quite expensive. You can imagine we need, because it goes around all the tacks that hold the fabric, all around here, around here, around here, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of length there. And gimp's not that cheap. I found this one though in a French shop, amazingly. You can see that it holds the fabric in place. Ooh la la. Like that. Very nice. And that one was only. That was a euro a meter, that wasn't was it? That was a euro a meter. Yeah. I suspect we need, I think it was six meters for each. So that's, Ooh, that's not bad. The budget can stretch to that. They have enough. So, pleased with that, just got to get the confidence to do it. My staple gun isn't very powerful. My arms aren't very powerful. Oh, I disagree so on that. Maybe call in a friend or two. <laughs> and then, we've got to start this one. I can't get any more of these tacks out of this chair. They are well and truly in there. Probably more like nails so and tacks. That's going to be a job for you one night. Why, thank you, darling. Can't think of anything better this to do. This is fabric that I'd bought originally years ago to go on these chairs, so I think I might do the back in that, have it a plain back. Right. It's because I've got metres of that as well. Have you? Yeah. Let's use it up. Yeah. Does look good, though. I, I'd said before in a video, I love the colour, really. Like, it goes so well in this corner with the radiator and actually the lampshade as well, so good job there. Right, let's Crack on. Again. We're trying again. Oh, we're not going to show the pattern. I decided no. overnight what the pattern should be, and that's what I've decided to go with. It could go really well or horribly wrong. We'll find yeah. out. Working together with measurements and lines, um, ladders and spirit levels and Bethany, it's going to be trying. <laughs> Well, we had a bit of a drama yesterday. The first one's up now though. We've just put the second one up. We um, tried to make a pole so just to keep it in position. We had extension poles were three meters on other extension poles. And in the end, it just, because it's so high a drop, four meters, um, it just wasn't happening even on chairs and tables. So I put a duvet cover underneath this one that's already fixed. It did fall down once <laughs> when we glued it. <laughs> um, it's been up there all night. So that's been up there like 24 hours now. That's not coming down. So we're going for number two. Yeah, well, it's up there at the moment. I'm going to come down the ladder, put a duvet underneath just in case. Um, we've had to go into the centre of these arches and line it up with the centre. All four aren't the same. You can see from the laser, they're slightly and well, quite way out. So the so one to the top of the camera and the one at the bottom of the camera. Those two are the same length. And then the one to the right and the left of the camera, as in the long lengths, they're the same, but they're different from each other. So one side of the square is actually longer than the other. So it's more of a rectangle, which is why the laser doesn't look like it lines up. But it's old. Everything's crooked in an old house. I'm feeling the same. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the laser level 
on position. We've marked the tip of the moulding. I'm just scoring the plaster with a scalpel, crisscrossing it, just to give an extra key for the, the moulding adhesive. I said to mum that this is like when we did, I don't know if anyone remembers, cross, hatch and slip. We did it a lot in art at school and it's pretty much the same thing that you do with clay. Never heard of it personally. I don't know how you've never heard of that. Right, so I just need to come down and get the moulding. Concentration. <gasps> don't sneeze. You know you said you'd never work above your head again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's in position. Wow. I'm just squeezing it against the ceiling. But and the excess glue, the adhesive, I should brush out with using washing up liquid and a brush. I can see from I haven't seen it yet from the fourth angle, it looks amazing. It's that's getting so on, it's coming on, isn't it? What was your pottery theory? Cross, hatch and slip. So that sounds like some stitching thing or something, knitting thing, but you were talking about pottery at school, weren't you? I yeah. did pottery at school and the only thing I remember doing is you always made sure you had an air bubble in your pottery before you put it in the oven. So it doesn't explode? Exploded everyone. I thought... <laughs> I was the one. <laughs> I bet there's other people who did that as well. I thought you were meant to make sure there wasn't an air bubble because the air bubble would I explode. so much fun when you've got your friend who has made the perfect teapot and you think, that's not coming out of the oven if I put an air bubble in there. You're horrible. <laughs> that's why he got expelled. Oi! <laughs> so we specifically covered up this area of the wooden floor so that I can get on and paint the skirting board and now it's time to reveal how good a job I've done. So maybe just go away. <laughs> I was going to say, well, this doesn't go well. <laughs> because we don't stage things, it just happens. I have more paint on my floor. Yeah, the moment of truth. I've got no nails, I can, can't get it out. <laughs> and you're probably thinking, um, is this going to take the varnish off? But no, because I didn't varnish the strip along the edge purposely for that reason. Oh, isn't that satisfying? Oh, a bit of overspill there. Oh, the other side looked so good. Just put it on the other side instead. Look, look. <laughs> oh, look. Look how nice that is. <laughs> Ow. Oh, it's a bit stuck there. So I can go along that edge with a, a little scalpel, get off the excess, and then I can stain that one piece along there when I give the floor a second coat but look how clean that looks look how clean that looks <laughs> and then I've got to go back to the walls and finish all of this Beth needed some more on the door yesterday uh, but it's coming on slowly yeah because it's all white and cream <laughs> you can't see where you've been you can't see anything <laughs> I know where I've been but it just doesn't make it look like it's any different. So we've spent hours in this hallway. Doesn't look any different, does it, Mum? It will all come together in the end. Yeah, because what we've been doing is the first coat, but the second coat will make a difference. Mm -hmm.